Welcome to the Three Edge Week in Review for the week of January 24th. I'm Fritz Foltz, the Chief Investment Strategist here at Three Edge, and joining me here today once again is Steve Cucchiaro, CEO and Chief Investment Officer here at Three Edge Asset Management. Since the onset of the global pandemic in March of 2020, retail investors in particular seem to have lived by the adage of always buy the dip, meaning that whenever the stock market would hit a rough patch and decline, they would step in and buy. And up to now, that approach has worked. However, the investing environment in 2020 has certainly changed. The Fed has announced their intention to raise short-term interest rates and tighten monetary policy over the coming months to combat levels of inflation not seen in decades. And perhaps throwing a bit of cold water on the always buy the dip approach to investing, and maybe even ushering in a new era of sell the rallies. But before we get into that topic, let's look at the activity in the global markets this week. And the Federal Reserve and the FOMC once again were the newsmakers this week. The Fed held its January FOMC meeting, signaling its intention to begin to raise short-term interest rates, known as the Fed funds rate, in March. They also confirmed their bond buying programs would end this March as well. The sea change in the Fed's monetary policy has investors seeking to reposition themselves for a more hawkish Fed and tighter monetary policy. And since the beginning of this year, we've certainly seen the equity markets wobble a good bit. In addition, inflationary pressure and the Fed's policy shift have led to declines in the value of bonds, since increasing yields also mean decreasing prices of fixed income instruments. The yield on the 10-year U.S. Treasury, for example, has now risen to around 1.85%, having started the year around one and a half. At the same time, real assets have actually held up much better than either equities or bonds so far this year. Commodity indices increasing in value by approximately 7% thus far in 2022, and gold has held up as well, just down slightly year to date. So let me bring Steve into the conversation now. And Steve, as we know, the investing strategy of always buy the dip has worked well since the onset of the pandemic. And actually, I mean, in some respects, it's sort of been self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Since investors step in to buy whenever the market pulls back. So retail investors seem to have helped halt what could have been more material uh, equity market corrections. And I guess the danger in this approach is that buying the dip works until one day it doesn't. So from where we stand today, what are the risks for investors in continuing their always by the dip approach to investing in equities? Well, Fritz, from late March 2020 until January 3rd of this year, buy the dip was a winning strategy, as you mentioned, meaning every time during this period, whenever the stock market had even a minor correction or dip, it rebounded to new highs every time, as you can see in the accompanying chart. You can say that the market trained a large number of investors by rewarding buy the dip behavior. It all started with the Fed. They lowered interest rates to zero. Then they issued extraordinary and excessive monetary stimulus, which largely stayed in the financial system, and inflated asset prices. As more investors practiced buy the dip, other investors had what we call FOMO, F-O-M-O, or fear of missing out. This created a self-reinforcing feedback loop that perpetuated the practice by drawing in more investors over time. The problem, of course, is that a buy the dip strategy completely ignores valuation. The higher the market climbs, the more investors pile on, leaving an overvalued market becoming even more overvalued, and, but then vulnerable to an eventual large correction once a catalyst intervenes. Now that the Fed has announced a 180 degree change in its policy, namely to reverse its money printing and to raise interest rates, this could be the catalyst that ends the bull market. Excellent. So now, so let's look at the other side of the buy the dip coin, and we refer to this as sell the rally or sell into the rally strategy, which would mean when you get equity market rallies uh, from here, you would sell into those. And I suppose that would only be appropriate if you were convinced that we were at the end of the historic bull market, right? So you need some wisdom here. 
what would it be that would uh, make selling into the rallies an effective strategy going forward? Well, it's simpler than it sounds because it, it would take an abrupt change in, in one's behavior to all of a sudden think the opposite way right. of the way many investors were trained over the last 22 months. It's been quite a while since investors face an extended bear market. So there are some great classic examples. Uh, after the stock market crash of 20, 1929, it took until 1954 to come back and reach 1929's peak price. Uh, another classic example, the Japanese stock market peaked on the first trading day of 1990 and still hasn't recovered to that price, You know, now over 30 years later. Then we have the tech stock bubble that peaked in March of 2000. And then the NASDAQ 100 index of tech stocks fell over 80% by September of 2002. The S&P 500 index of the 500 largest companies in the US fell nearly 50%, as you can see in the chart. And then we have the global financial crisis that, where the market peaked in October of 2007 and didn't reach a bottom until March 2009, drop of over 50%. So in every case, the bear market never went down in a straight line, as, as the charts illustrate. Mm -hmm. uh, however, well, well, in addition, some of the strongest rallies in stock market history have occurred during bear markets. Right. So this right. is why it's so difficult for investors to navigate a bear market. You have sizable corrections, and then those sizable corrections are typically followed by a sharp rebound. And that gives the impression that the bear market must surely be over, encouraging investors to stay invested or to jump back in before they miss out. And then after drawing capital back into the market, the bear market typically peaks at a lower level than the previous high, then punishes those investors by dropping to a new low. And just as investors finally consider selling, a new rally gives hope that all they need to do is be patient and, and they'll be able to recover their losses. And then the process keeps repeating itself. Right. And statistics show that it's often not until the market has already reached bottom that investors finally have had enough and they say, get me out at any price. And that's just about when the new uh, bull market starts. So I just want to conclude by saying it's often said that bull markets climb a wall of worry and that bear markets slide down a river of hope. Ah, excellent. Very good. I like that expression. It's also interesting to me when I watch you explain the chart is it's so easy to fall into the trap of saying, oh, well, everybody knew that was just a bear market rally and it wasn't going to last. And that's not the case at all uh, for investors when they're in the middle. Of it. So now let's discuss how investors, you know, based on the regime shift that has occurred here, how might investors position their investment portfolios going forward between buy the dip and sell the rally. And one thing I'm sure of is your answer is going to be more nuanced than that, either choosing one or the other there. So how do they, how do investors think about this going forward? So one thing I can say is that it certainly appears that during this incredible bull market that we've experienced, many investors abandoned risk management and got carried away with the bull market. And and, and they became trained by the market, so to speak, to ignore everything else and just buy the dip. And that was a winning strategy during that time period. Yet when a market becomes overvalued, that is when risk management is, is most important, not least important. When greed turns to fear, the bull market turns into a bear market, being overinvested is no longer fun. So especially for investors whose equity allocations have become too extreme uh, during the bull market, Rallies could be golden opportunities to rebalance one's portfolio and protect against the risk of an extended bear market. A bear market is not necessarily predestined. It has a lot to do with how the Fed will conduct its monetary policy going forward. Mm -hmm. However, we can say that, and based on our models, that the risk of a bear market in U.S. growth stocks, given its degree of overvaluation, while the Fed is now reversing its stimulus, does raise the odds of an extended bear market. Excellent. Great. Thank you very much.
and and obviously, you know, as Steve mentioned, you know, we're not advocates of either always buy the dip or always sell the rallies. Markets are just simply too complex for any single minded approach all of the time. One thing I do think is certain, though, and that is that more than likely the Federal Reserve and the FOMC are going to continue to be a major part of this story, right, for the global capital markets in 2022. So that will do it for Steve and me. Remember, all our videos are available on our 3Edge YouTube channel, and our videos and written commentaries are also available on our website at 3edgeam.com. So until next time, on behalf of Steve and everyone here at 3Edge, thanks for listening.